Not your way to a new necklace with our Mixed Metals Macrame project. If you'd like to craft along, the library has a limited number of craft kits available. Reserve yours on our website, ssldl.info, click on Events, and register for the September 21st DIY event. Curbside pickup is available. To make the necklace, you'll need six yards of cord or string, a flat key ring, a necklace chain, 12 beads that will fit on your cord, a jump ring, Something to secure your ring in place while you're doing the knots. It could be a clipboard or a piece of tape or you could even possibly hook it over the end of a chair or something. Something to keep it in place. Scissors. And a ruler which is optional. The only knot you'll need to make this necklace is a square knot. So we'll take four strands. The two in the middle will stay together. They'll become the base that the knot will be tied along. Pick up the leftmost strand and cross it over the two in the middle. Then you'll pick up the rightmost strand, bring it underneath the two in the middle, up through the loop you created with the left cord, and then carefully slide the knot up along the two strands in the middle. And now we're halfway there. To complete the square knot, we'll do the exact same steps but on the opposite side. So pick up your rightmost strand, cross it over the two in the middle, Pick up the leftmost strand and bring it underneath the two in the middle and up through the loop. And then pull to tighten. It kind of helps to secure the two strands in the middle with your thumb while you're sliding the knot up the length. This necklace is a series of two square knots in a row, so you're going to do the exact same thing that we did. First the left hand side, then the right hand side, pull it up and then We'll zoom in a little bit here and see that we've got two square knots on our length. And that's all you really need to know how to do, so let's get started. Grab your key ring and your jump ring. We'll open up the key ring and slide the jump ring on it. Next, take your cord and cut it into six even lengths that are approximately a yard each, so 36 inches. Take two of the cords that you cut and match up all of the ends so they're all pinched together and you're creating a long, smooth loop. Pull the loop through your key ring and then feed the ends through the loop. You'll tighten it and then the cords will be attached to your key ring. Repeat this step with your remaining four pieces of cord, pairing them up and attaching them to the key ring, resulting in three separate bunches of cords. Adhere your keychain to the clipboard, tape it to a table, hook it on something, and separate all of the cords so that they're flat. Now it's time for those square knots. We will begin with the first bundle of cords, so that is the first four strands, and we will do the square knot starting with the left hand side, repeating with the right hand side, and then doing it all over again to create two square knots in a row. By the end of this, you'll be tying square knots in your sleep. Your first two square knots are done, and they look something like this. Now repeat this step for the remaining two bundles on your key ring. So you'll be making two complete square knots for each bundle, resulting in six total, two on each of the three bundles. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not me. Not me who? Not me two more square knots. Okay, so this is what round one looks like. We've got two square knots in a row on each of the three bundles of cord. Here's a little road map for the remainder of our knotting. So we've got the first round, and then in the second round, we're gonna be combining some of the strands from other knots to create two in the middle. Separate the strands from the first two knots, and we will be taking the rightmost strand from the first knot and the leftmost strand from the second knot, and they will become the two in the middle of your new knot. Then take the strands on either side of them, and you'll begin doing your square knots just like before. Leave a little gap between your first row and your second row, maybe about half an inch. You know the drill, time for that second set of square knots. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And now we're at row three. So we are going to make it just like row one with three sets of two square knots each. The strand on the left hand side is going to be a bit looser than the rest, so just kind of eyeball it and leave it as long as you think looks good. Aren't you glad that I'm not doing another knock-knock joke right now? 
You can grab those four strands and push them off to the side and focus on the four in the middle. Same as before, we'll take the two strands in the middle and they will be the base of our next two score knots. And then we will knot the remaining four strands. For the fourth row, we are back to doing two sets of two square knots. And now we're in the home stretch. For the final row, you will be creating one set of two square knots. So grab the rightmost strand from the first knot and the leftmost strand from the second knot and grab the cords on either side and do your two square knots. Okay, time for some beads. Grab your strand. I find it easier to cut the end at a bit of an angle to feed the bead through, but if it doesn't go through the first time around, just kind of keep trimming the end of the strand, preferably at an angle end, but hopefully that will help you get the beads on. Figure out how long you want your fringe to be, and then you'll just tie a simple knot at the end um, so that it adheres the bead onto the strand. I knotted mine pretty loosely because um, I wanted to play around with the positioning of the beads along the fringe. So my recommendation is do a little bit of a knot to begin with and then when you have everything where you want it then you can tighten those knots up. Once all the beads are where you want them and you've tightened the knots you can begin trimming the excess cord. I left a little bit of length after each knot and then I frayed the ends a bit to give them some texture. Finally, you'll thread the chain through your jump ring, completing your necklace. Thanks for crafting along today. We can't wait to see the necklaces that you've made. Many, many thanks to Leah Griffith for this amazing pattern. Still feeling naughty? Hop on to Creative Bug. There are a lot of cute patterns if you search for macrame in the search bar at the top. Personally, I thought that these hanging planters looked like a really fun idea. Have you signed up for Creative Bug yet? You have free access with your library card. You can find it on the library's website, ssldl.info. Go to Research and Alphabetize Databases and then scroll down to Creative Bug. Register using your library card number, create an account, and you'll be all ready to go.